This is what the collapsed bridge looks like in the daylight. The ship that hit the bridge crossed over the Patapsco River, a key waterway that serves as a major hub for transportation for shipping in the East Coast. Traffic at, at the port of Baltimore has been suspended until further notice. The bridge itself spanned more than a mile and a half, imagine that, and about 31,000 people use it every single day. I want to now show you what it looks like this morning as the sun is now rising. Understand, we are less than a quarter of a mile away from where this collapse happened here. You see that we still have law enforcement here blocking off the area, but when you look down, you can see pieces of the bridge now this morning. Understand that this is a bridge that was here since 1977, and now it is completely gone. 1.6 miles of this bridge gone. This this is something that was so impactful for our community in Baltimore area. Understand 31,000 vehicles will travel on this daily, according to MDTA, and now this is no longer an option. Keep in mind, this means that the 695 loop that so many would use is completely gone now. We understand that a lot of trucks would use this area, especially since they could not go through the tunnels, especially if they had hazardous material that they need to transport, and now that is no longer an option. Police still are still advising people to please not be in this area. They are deterring you. Go through 895, 95 instead. 695 is no longer available. It's something we never thought we would ever have to say where Francis Scott Key Bridge is completely gone. What you're looking at now, um if you're watching us, what you are looking at are all the ships that are stacked up. They're now going to have to turn around and find another port to go to. And that is going to really create a backlog wherever they end up going to. Uh, in Norfolk, it's not the entire terminal. Uh, it's not the entire port that is closed in Norfolk, but it's the cruise ship terminal that's under uh, reconstruction and repairs. And that is why cruise ships will not be able to go to Norfolk. I'm imagining a number of these cargo ships will, but then the cargo that they're expecting to pick up, it's sitting in Baltimore. So this is an enormous and, problem. And I can only imagine those cargo ships that are just waiting, I mean, really planning on turning around. I mean, this is the image that they're seeing. You know, um, we're getting this view right now, but that's what they're seeing right now.
CBS News Philadelphia reporter Ryan Hughes is at the scene in Baltimore. Ryan, what information do we know about the collapse itself? Not only how it could have happened, but perhaps how it could have been prevented? was able to make a mayday call that prompted officials up top to stop traffic on the bridge. Well, the NTSB is about to brief everyone in about 30 minutes or so. A team is on the ground now investigating exactly how this crash happened. And just over my shoulder, that scene is so harrowing. Part of that bridge in the road just completely broke apart. Right now, there is an active search and rescue operation. Dive teams remain in the water actively searching for survivors. They are using drones. They are using sonar and other technology. Uh, we just heard from Maryland's governor, Wes Moore, a short time ago. He says the entire state of Maryland is in shock right now. He says that uh, at last check, there are still at least six people that are unaccounted for. Uh, all of them believed to be part of a construction crew that was on the bridge at the time of this crash. We were told they were doing pothole repair when the bridge uh, went into the river. Uh, right now, two people have been rescued. One was rushed to the hospital in very serious condition. Uh, another survivor was taken out of the water, and we were told that he uh, refused treatment and is said to be doing okay, which is just remarkable. But this is a work around the clock, all hands on deck effort. You have members of the Anne Arundel County Fire Department, Baltimore County Fire Department, and surrounding agencies all pitching in, actively working to search for their survi those survivors. And again, this happened uh, during a time when it was quite chilly in Baltimore, uh, some 40 degrees earlier this morning. That water is also very cold. Dive teams, they had to wait until the sun came up to get into the water. Uh, right now, the Baltimore Harbor, it remains closed. Questions were asked, when will that reopen? What are the impacts going to be? And the governor says that's not the main priority. Right now, the main priority is searching for those survivors and keeping everyone involved and their families in mind. Uh, as to what caused this, right now we are being told there was that container ship that issued a mayday call uh, before crashing into the column. They issued that call knowing hitting the bridge was a possibility. And once they did, neighbors in the area, witnesses who saw this report that they saw some type of an explosion, and then literally their jaws dropped to the ground when they saw that bridge just drop into the river. Vehicles, we are told, were crossing the span at the time. They dropped into the water, and now again, there is an active search and rescue effort searching for at least six people that remain unaccounted for. CBS News correspondent Ramey Innocencio is in Baltimore right now. Ramey, uh, let's talk about the atmosphere right now in Baltimore. Of course, the main concern authorities are saying is in rescuing those seven people who remain missing. But just looking at the bridge and just looking at the map, this is an area that I imagine is going to require a huge shift in people's everyday commute. Yes, absolutely, Olivia. Uh, the uh, Francis Scott Key Bridge has been an iconic fixture of Baltimore for nearly the past 50 years. There's shock, there's disbelief that this bridge now is basically just gone. I've been speaking to some Baltimore residents and they said that it was a gut punch to uh, something that they've known every single day of their lives, as we heard from the governor just now. People drive this bridge as a normal part of life. Another resident said that they thought it was a majestic bridge that they um, appreciate uh, as they drive over it, something that they can see uh, the surrounding wilderness, that they can appreciate the surrounding uh, waters and uh, the port of Baltimore uh, with it uh, just nearby. But now the fact that this doesn't exist and the idea that this may not be replaced in the near future it took about five years for the first bridge uh, to be, one, de uh, commissioned and then also to be finally built. If it takes mm -hmm. that long, it will have massive repercussions yeah. on a day-to-day -day level, as you just talked about, but also economically for the port, port of Baltimore as well as for the country and really for ships going around the world. Yeah, I imagine that there is so much uh, that goes through there. Now, you know, one thing that we learned from authorities is that there was a mayday call uh, from the ship that was made before it struck the bridge. I imagine that must have saved a lot of lives. Unfortunately, this happened at 1.30 a.m., not during rush hour. But what else do we know about what happened before the collapse? Sure. So from what we have been told, uh, the Dali cargo vessel left the port of Baltimore, and shortly thereafter, 
It was only uh, into a few minutes into its uh, journey. Uh, it radioed the Port of Baltimore and said that there was uh, some kind of problem, some kind of malfunction, uh, and they had been starting to lose power. And we even see in the uh, uh, live cam footage from that time, just around uh, 1.30 a.m. in the morning, that they started to lose power. The power went out, power went back on, power went out again. And then at some point, you see this big fluff, this big uh, cloud of yeah. black smoke. That is indicative that they tried to steer the vessel somehow to make, uh, to hopefully make it avoid uh, the bridge. We now know that didn't happen, and shortly thereafter we saw that massive shock from that explosion, mm. uh, concrete uh, coming off of the pylon, water splashing off of the ship, and then now we know uh, that the Francis Scott Key Bridge no longer exists. My God. CBS News Homeland Security and Justice reporter Nicole Skanga joins us now. She is in Baltimore, of course. Uh, Nicole, you interviewed the mayor earlier today. What did he tell you? Yeah, the mayor told me that right now the priority is rescue and recovery and his uh, thoughts and prayers, his heart is really going out to these six unaccounted for individuals who, you know, law enforcement, uh, rescue teams, U.S. Coast Guard has yet to uh, identify and find. They are all construction workers, we're told. Take a listen to what the mayor had to say. There are still six lives that law enforcement is searching for. What more can you tell us about who is still Lost. Well, we know that they're all workers uh, from who are working on this bridge trying to make other people's uh, transit better. And we, uh, our prayers are with them and their families, but also for our first responders who are uh, we're looking for them right now and risking their own lives and not the best conditions. And that's where our focus is and that's where it will remain until uh, this is no longer a search and rescue. And obviously the Port of Baltimore, the ninth busiest port, a lot of commerce, a lot of traffic coming in and out. Also the road behind me uh, and the bridge itself, a very important corridor here on the Beltway, a critical infrastructure junction along the I-95 corridor. The mayor saying none of that matters until these rescue and recovery efforts uh, are completed. And law enforcement says that they're in this sort of crucial eight to 12 hours where they are sifting through debris, not only the ship, but of course the motor vehicles that we know dropped into the ocean when this mm. collision occurred uh, roughly at 1.30 a.m. this morning. Uh, Nicole, of course there are a million questions, but what are those main questions, the primary ones that the investigation that's underway is focusing on uh, to answer at this very moment? Yeah, I, I think the number one question is who are these unaccounted for individuals? Were they given any warning, any shot uh, when that mayday call went out uh, in order to evacuate the bridge here? Uh, I think there are also some questions regarding the timeline. Uh, yeah. You know, we know that the boat left the harbor at 1 a.m. and that this collision happened at approximately 1.30 a.m. Questions about were there still tugboats nearby and what actually stopped uh, the propelling from the, the motor of the boat from functioning right. properly. We know that Mayday call went out, uh, you know, once the uh, propulsion on the boat, uh, there was there was some sort of malfunction, the power perhaps went out. And so more details around what caused that, um, you know, and we expect to hear more from law enforcement in the coming hours. NTSB expected to give a presser here in just an hour. So we'll keep all of our viewers posted. Absolutely. We'll definitely go to that press conference when it happens. Uh, Nicole, Skanga, thank you so much. We want to continue our coverage. We understand Kelsey Kushner is uh, standing by. Kelsey. Yeah, well, right now we are waiting for that press update from NTSB. You know, they keep pushing that time back. It was going to be noon. Now I'm told it's around 2.30 that we can expect an update. Of course, that's not very welcoming news for people who are sitting here waiting for answers. It's a race against time right now, really. Uh, you know, with families who are waiting to kind of find out, you know, what the latest into this investigation is, where their family members may be. But I'm standing here in Dundalk. You can see part of that bridge behind me here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and zoom in on it so you can see what it looks like right now. We know that a lot of cars were kind of halted from driving over that bridge early in the early morning hours tonight, of course, which Governor Westmore said was heroic efforts among crews uh, who responded quickly. You know, I was out here earlier before we got to the scene. We talked to some truck drivers who are parked over at a gas station, a nearby gas station right now. I kind of asked them, you know, how this affects them and their job, to which they told me they're waiting 
waiting to kind of find out now what their next moves are. They're waiting for instruction. You know, this wasn't the only route that they could take, but they do know that this now adds some time to their commute and they're waiting to kind of figure out their next direction here. Um, uh, just a few moments ago, we did see some uh, crew members bring out some additional spotlights and I can only imagine that those lights are now preparing uh, crews for their, you know, search and rescue into the evening hours. They're preparing to be out here uh, in case the sun, you know, starts to set tonight and they're still out here looking for some of those family members. But again, like I said, it is a race against time right now. A lot of people out here waiting for an update, waiting for some answers. It is reassuring that there are so many agencies that are out here. But again, a lot of people who are sitting here glued to the TV uh, want to know, you know, where exactly are we at in this investigation? We know six people still missing. We want to know, you know, are, are, are we are we finding them? Like, where are we at right now with, with this investigation? So. Again, we're standing out here waiting for that press update. Again, it's expected to happen around 2.30 today. And, of course, we will let you know if that time does get pushed back again. Guys.